I'm now seeing myself lying on my bed and it's as if I am out of my body looking at myself lying on the bed. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. To all my returning subscribers, thank you guys so much for your love, for your support, for subscribing to my new channel. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for the love and support. If you are new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and become part of the family. So to get right into it, today I thought I should just share my salvation story, how I got born again and how I encountered the Lord, how my life basically turned around from what it was to what it currently is. So stay tuned. So just to give a bit of background, just like most people, I grew up going to church as a child, I grew up following my parents to church, I went to the Sunday school. I attended Sunday school, but there wasn't really like um, like an understanding of the whole concept of Christ, building a relationship with him, getting to know the word. There wasn't really any of that. I just went to church just as a Sunday activity because, you know, it's Sunday. Hey, let's go to church. So yeah, that was me growing up, uh, coming to high school then. I had friends, but in my high school days, I wasn't really going to church because then I had relocated from staying with my parents to now staying with my siblings. So there wasn't really much of church going at that point in time. So yeah, I wasn't really going to church. I had friends who were engaging in quite a lot of things. And for me, having come from the Christian background, I found those things rather intriguing, you know, people talking about having boyfriends, people talking about going out, we were very young at that time, but for some reason, my friends had access to going to clubs, they drank, they went to parties and all of that. And for me, all of this was foreign. So I'm just this child from, you know, humble beginnings, humble background, very disciplined parents. And that was me growing up. So coming to high school, I met all these friends who, you know, were already exposed to so many things that were just, I don't know, intriguing for me. I was quite surprised that, you know, at that age, you know, you're already engaging in these kind of things. But anyway, it was, it also sparked some form of curiosity in me, I must say, um, you know, people talking about partying and all of that. I hadn't been exposed to it. So yeah, it was, it was, it was something else for me. So then in 2010, I then moved to stay with my brother who had just gotten born again, mind you. So I had just moved in to stay with him. He was going to church. So obviously I then um, started going to church with him. It was nice, fun times. And then a few months down the line, um, having started going to his church, then I decided, you know what? I think I'm ready to become born again because obviously I'd been hearing all about it and all of that, but I hadn't given my life over to Christ. So a few months down the line from going to church, then I gave my life to Christ, got filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. So yes, that was 2010. Uh, things were good. And then along the line, we started not going to church as often as we were before. We were still going, but not as often as in the beginning. But then even though we weren't going to church as much, my brother always made it a point to share the word with us, you know, new revelations that he got. He'd always want to share that. But for me at that point, for some reason, this was now in my final year of um, high school. For some reason, then I, at that time when we stopped going to church, I also somewhat lost interest in the whole, you know, building your relationship with Christ and, you know, just basically growing in the faith. I had started really losing interest. I was all about, you know, I was, I'll just read my novels once in a while. Maybe my sister and I would pick up the Bible and I don't know, read a verse or two, but then that was, as far, that was as far as it went. But my brother would always make it a point to share the word. He'd always make it a point to share these revelations that he'd be getting. And for me, yeah, no, that at that time, something was definitely worrying me because at that time I was, I would get so irritated just by him, you know, sitting by my bedside, maybe after dinner or so, 
he'd come to my room, sit at my bedside, then he'd start sharing, you know, all these revelations and things. And I'd just be like, dude, you know, like, can you just give me a break? Can you just, I've heard, I heard you yesterday and I heard you the day before. So, you know, can you just give me like some space or can you just give me a break? At that point in time, I really was not interested in hearing all these things that he wanted to share while he was learning in his faith and, you know, in the Bible and all of that. I wasn't interested. Then comes the following year, which was my time now to go to university. We call it varsity in South Africa. So then the following year comes, I'm accepted to go to uh, a university. So now I relocate from the city that I was living in, which was Johannesburg. I now relocate to another city called Pretoria. So now I, I, I now live in the university residence. We call it res. So I now live in res. I live by myself now I'm just like yeah you know I'm grown I I now have all the freedom that I wanted it's now time for me to experiment life all the things that I grew up hearing from my friends now this is the time for me to live a bit yeah growing up so yeah get to university make friends I had a, a very close friend of mine she was Tosa uh, so yeah I had a close friend of mine she became my friend we studied together you know all those things on weekends i'd be at her place uh chilling together with her other friends maybe from home i don't remember where she knew them from exactly but yeah would be there with her other friends and that's where you know you have time now you're a student you've given yourself the permission to explore so this is the time now when i start deciding that okay i'm gonna nibble a bit in drinking and alcohol so then i start um you know on weekends occasionally not not so often but occasionally then on weekends when we're chilling at her place that's if we had money <laughs> being a student as well so yeah weekends chilling at her place sometimes would buy drinks and then would be there drinking and maybe playing games or whatever else we'd be doing so that was my first year in university just a few months into the year yeah and then a particular day, now this is where things took a turn for me. So on a particular day, one of my friend's friend, then uh, it was her birthday. So then she invited us over to her place. She had alcohol, she had um, hubblies, she had, you know, weed and all those things that, yeah, everything that makes a party. So she invited us over to her place. We're there having a good time. So on this day, that's the day that I decided that, you know what? I've always been a cautious person. I've always, you know, been mindful of what I do. I've always tried to be alert at all times and not just get lost in whatever I do. So this particular day, I was just like, you know what? Today, I'm letting loose today. I'm going all in. So we're at her place. Um, obviously then there's alcohol and all of that so we're consuming whatever's there and basically having a good time so yeah then we leave her place to now uh, uh there was a, a drinking place called hatfield square so if you've been around pretoria then you definitely know what i'm talking about so now we leave her place we go to the square which is basically like a, a, a like it's buildings or restaurants or pubs whatever you want to call them that like make up sort of like a square where you know it was like a drinking student place so in the center normally performances and stuff would take place so we went out now to the square which is the drinking spot where yeah, students uh go to drink so i lived like a street away from that place i basically lived across the road from the place so now on this day funny enough yeah i'm letting loose you know what i'm having a good time out with my friends and all of that so now on this particular day guys you know when the devil means to destroy your life on this day people are offering to buy us drinks you know strangers that we don't even know are offering to buy us drinks that day i drank things i've never seen i've never heard of never touched in my life but that day because i was letting loose i was like you know what i'll accept anything so people were buying us drinks drank we were there for quite a while at some point i don't even remember what what happened because 
the following day after that you know i only remember to a certain point i couldn't remember past a certain point so yeah that day then i eventually then in the evening like this was at night now because we left the ladies place at maybe i don't know seven ish eight ish then we went to the square drank had a good time and then i decided then you know what i think i've had enough i'm going home to, to tell the truth, I actually don't know how I got home because I don't even remember when I left. I don't remember how I got home. I don't remember how I found my, 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 my apartment. I don't even know how I found my room and how I got in and all of that. But by God's grace, I made it home safely with nothing happening given the, 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 the times that we live in. But yeah, I thank God that he kept me. I made it home that day. And the next thing... I remember the next thing I remember now is I guess it was in the morning or so the next thing I remember now I'm waking up no the next thing I remember now I'm now seeing myself lying on my bed this is in my race now I'm now seeing myself lying on my bed and it's as if I am out of my body looking at myself lying on the bed so then the only thing that was going through my mind at that time I'm like oh my gosh what is my mother gonna say? I died because of alcohol. My mother's gonna be so disappointed in me. Like, that's just what was going through my head. Like, oh my gosh, I died because of alcohol. Because mind you, I grew up a very good child. My parents trained me very well. My parents disciplined me. I was not a wayward child. I've never been an out of lying child or had, you know, given them problems growing up. So now, this one day that I just decided that I'm gonna go all in, this is the day that I, like, the feeling that I had at that point is that I'm dead, basically. Cause like, even, even looking back at it, I, there's no other explanation for what happened to me that day. I am literally seeing myself on the bed. I'm standing beside my bed, crying to God saying, oh my God, I died because of alcohol. And then after that, the next memory I have after that is now me waking up. I think my friend, my friend had come now to my room because she lived in a different building. So my friend who I was with the previous night now had come to my room and she's the one who then woke me up. So now I'm waking up to her and, you know, she's tired. Everybody's hung over. We're just there. At this point, I'm feeling so sick. I was feeling so weak. Like... I was just out of it like I was so sick I don't think I've ever been sick like that in my life I've never been sick like that in my life so I'm waking up now my friend has come now I'm waking up and my roommate who sleeps across the room from me she's sitting there with her friend as well mind you she's very like churchy very Christian lady well kept I could not even ask her like do do you remember what happened to me yesterday do you know how I got home or anything like that the shame would not allow me to ask. But anyway, yeah, I, d I couldn't even ask her what she remembers or what she saw me doing. But yeah. So now I'm waking up from this encounter, this out of body experience that I just had. And thank God I did wake up because I honestly thought like my life had ended. I was literally dead. Like, you know, when I even tell people the story, most people don't believe, but I know what happened to me that day. Like I, I was literally dead basically that's that's the only explanation that i had i had died from an overdose of alcohol but i thank god that eventually somehow i woke up and yeah i woke up now to my friend and you know i was sick for days i was feeling so nauseous i was feeling sick a lot of things were happening to me i could not even i didn't even share for some reason what had just happened to me to my friend like it was I was just still going through it all but after that like the next few days I literally sobered up I was just the thought of alcohol made me sick just you know I had no interest zero interest in going out zero interest in doing anything that I was doing just a previous just a few days ago like I had literally sobered up I had lost interest in all these things that I had told myself I'm going to enjoy when I get to varsity but yeah I thank God so now the next few days I'm 
basically in my room now i started looking for a church funny enough to try just you know i was just looking for a place of hope where i could just revive and rededicate my life back to christ and you know get my life back in order because at this point i just feel that you know what i'm off track so now i tried going to one of the um the fellowships on campus because we had fellow different fellowships on campus so i visited like one of the fellowships on campus i went there once went there the second time but something just still wasn't clicking so i was like you know what i'm gonna keep looking for a church but i don't think i'm gonna come back here so i stopped going to the fellowship and then i think a few days or if not a week or so later then i meet this lady she's like hi my name is so and so can i invite you to church this was now on a saturday so i'm like okay no no problem i don't have any plans for tomorrow anyway so no problem i'll join you for church tomorrow so then this lady invites me to gospel pillars church that is now this lady invites me to church i go with her when i get there you know it's a small it's quite a small church i'm seeing all these young people so this is also something now that's foreign to me i'm seeing young people who are actually excited you know happy to be in church young people who are actually excited to be serving god so that was one of the things that you know kind of surprised me like okay this is interesting finding a group of young people who are happy to be serving God. So during that service, actually, the pastor was preaching about change, which is what I had been longing for in my heart since my encounter night, since my encounter that I had. So that day the pastor was preaching about change, like throughout the whole message, it just felt like this man is talking to me. Like he's, he's literally talking to to he's literally ministering to me and it was one of those moments where you know nobody had to tell you like oh this is the place that god is calling you to or this is where god wants you to be on like i literally felt like this is the place where god is calling me to be i really thank god for that lady who invited me to church i really thank god for the day that i walked into that church because i've never looked back ever since that day so from there i rededicated my life back to god i started serving with joy i you know like the bible was finally making sense i started growing in the faith and i really 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 thank god for the ministry thank god for my brother who kept on pestering me with the word even though at that point it felt like this guy is irritating the life out of me but i thank i really thank god for him because i feel like it's those words that kept me at that point when i would i now felt like you know there was a void in my heart and it's as if at that point in time those words that my brother used to share just suddenly started making sense like all the things he used to share now started making sense even though at the time that he was sharing them i wasn't honestly actually listening but for some reason i guess my spirit was actually receiving what he was sharing because it's those words that kept me when i was ready to you know destroy my life and when the gates of hell were open i was ready to walk in but it's those same words that he shared that kept me it's as if i just decided that you know what i'm ready to live my life to the fullest and god was just like nope that's not the plan i know the plan that i have for you and that is not it so we're just gonna pause it right here before you go any further i'm really grateful to god for that grateful to god for keeping me preserving my life because god knows what would have happened to me during that time of my early varsity days but yeah i'm really grateful to god for keeping me throughout that time so if you are out there maybe you're praying for somebody or you're sharing the word with someone and it just seems like they're not changing or nothing is happening it just seems like you're pouring water on a rock guys i'd really advise do not give up on them because these are seeds that you're planting in their hearts and definitely if you keep on praying for them if you keep on sharing the word with them these seeds will definitely manifest these seeds will definitely come to fruition in their lives so do not stop sharing the word do not stop uh, you know preaching the word do not stop praying for people because god is honestly working something in them and i just say be patient with them whoever they may be at whatever point in life they may be just be patient just keep praying and just keep trusting god that something will definitely happen 
for the better you can expect my next video on friday and i really hope that this time i'm not really sure what the topic will be about but i'll put up some questions on instagram or some options on instagram and then you guys can decide what you want you guys can vote and decide what you want the next video to be on so if you're not yet following me on instagram my instagram handle is at shanice mm that's s-h-a-n-i-c-e underscore mm so you can go ahead and follow me and watch out for the questions throughout the week and i hope that my next video will be you know on a more lighter note this time but yeah thank you guys so much for watching until the end don't forget to give this video a thumbs up leave me a comment in the comment section of what your experience was how you got born again or maybe you're not born again yet maybe there's some questions that you have feel free to ask whatever it is that you might still need answers on and i will be more than happy to answer your questions so yeah go ahead and like leave a comment if you're not yet subscribed i do not know what you're waiting for so i'd advise that you go ahead and subscribe hit that notification bell so that the next time i post a video you can be alerted that my video is up but in the meantime, stay safe, stay positive, and stay prayerful. Just remember that Jesus loves you. Peace and blessings. <laughs>